Hey, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And one of the things that I really enjoy doing with Photoshop is I do a lot of compositing. And one of the things I really love is shadows. Now, I love creating shadows in Photoshop because when you create shadows, you can just take something that's completely surreal and make it real. You can, uh, that's how you put uh, definition. It shows you how you show scale distance all these different things are shown by shadows i know a lot of photographers are afraid of shadows and then when they do the compositing they take the shadows over with them but it's really not that hard to create your own shadows in photoshop and i'm going to show you right now how to create a cast shadow now uh, one of the things i want to let you know too is we also have a written tutorial step by step on photoshop cafe and i'll put the link in the bottom there and head over to that as well if you want to just kind of Follow along step by step with the written tutorial as well as this video that I'm recording right now. And if you're on the page on Photoshop Cafe, well, here's a video. So have a look. This will show you some of the things and then follow the steps and you should really get the hang of this pretty quickly. So when you're doing any amount of compositing or collaging, combining photos, etc., one of the most important things is shadows. Um, the correct shadows will ground them in the object. It'll give them a sense of scale. It'll give them a sense of where they are in space. Without the shadows, they can just be floating in midair. So here's a composite I did using the same model. This is Lena with different wigs and outfits that I shot in the studio and then composite onto this railroad bridge. So let's have a look. If I just put a white layer on here, you can see these shadows are just really basic shadows. I just painted them with a brush. And a lot of the time, this will work. There's two types of shadows here. I've got self-shadowing. So you can see this is actually on the people themselves. And this is just to kind of overemphasize the light source coming from this direction. I wanted to just kind of increase that shadow a little bit on this, on them. And then the other shadow is the shadow, is the grounding shadow here that puts them on the ground. So if I put the, um, the object back on, even though those shadows were pretty rough, you can see that they work perfectly. So we can see here, there's the shadow that's grounding them to the subject, and then the self-shadowing gives them a sense of actually being in the environment. All right, so let's have a look at creating some shadows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a cast shadow. I also have the written tutorial on photoshopcafe.com, and you'll see the link beneath there, and that will take you to the tutorial, and it'll give you all the steps and a little bit more information and detail on these shadows too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to create this cast shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide everything. And I'm just going to create a white background. So let's just bring one of the girls here, the girl on the guitar. And I'm just going to option click and I'm going to drag out a copy of her. And I'm just going to hide the original. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on creating a shadow, a cast shadow with her. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. There we go. I'm just going to kind of move her over here. And right now she's just floating in space. So there's a couple of different ways of creating this shadow. I'm going to show you both ways. The first way that I like to do it, which is super quick, and I just use the keyboard shortcuts for this, is I'll hit the Command J or Control J to make a copy. Then I want to fill it with black. So I'll hit the Option key to preserve transparency. Hold down Shift and then hit Delete. And then that fills it with black. And then essentially I've got a copy of it right there which is filled with black and I can turn this into the shadow now one of the things I want to do too notice there's a mask on there I'm gonna right click on that mask and apply that mask so I'm just gonna go here and choose apply layer mask and then what it does is it's just so when I go to transform this it's gonna transform it from the shadow and not the bounds of the area that I cut it out okay so I'm gonna drop this down behind her right now and I'm just gonna drag it out there and just put it roughly in that position and turn it off. Now I'm going to show you the second method. The second method is takes a little bit longer, but it's easier to do. We're just going to apply a layer style. So we're going to go under the FX. We're going to choose a drop shadow. So we're going to create the drop shadow. Now with the drop shadow, we can click and drag to reposition it. And we can turn that opacity up. And let's soften it just a little bit so we get a softer edge. So right now what we've got here is we've got a drop shadow. So here's one of the things about a drop shadow. Let me talk about that. I'm just going to apply it. We've got the drop shadow right now. What it does is it makes it look like she's sitting against a white seamless wall or a background. Or if I show you the background here, instead of being inside the scene, what it does is it makes it look like there's a, a projected or just a backdrop there and she's sitting in front of the backdrop. So a drop shadow will only do that. If we want to place the object inside the environment and integrate them with the environment, 
we need to create a car shadow or turn the drop shadow into a car shadow. So I'm just going to turn the white back on just so you can see a lot easier what's happening because it's a lot easier to see it against this white than it is in the background. And I'm going to show you how to do this now. So you can grab either of these uh, backgrounds. It could be the um, this one that we created. You notice we've got two backdrops there. It doesn't really matter. We could do the one from the um, drop shadow or we could use the one that we created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the one I created and we're just going to use the one from the drop shadow and um, just so I can show you some different things with it. So right now this is attached to her. We want to detach it from her so that we can uh, work with the shadow independently from our object. So what we do is we right click on effects and then you'll see there's an option here that's called create layers. So we're going to go down and choose create layer. And what this does is it will create a separate layer now from that adjustment. So you'll see now that that adjustment's no longer there, or that layer style. That layer style has now been converted to the background layer. Now, if you change the opacity or anything on there, you could just double click on its options here and go up and you'd see under the advanced options, bring that up to 100 and that'll make it solid. All right, cool. So now we've got a basic shadow. Well, we need to change this to a car shadow and there's a couple of things we need to do. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to position this where I'm anchoring it because these are the areas that are going to be touching the ground and I want to make sure that the shadow is anchored to those areas. So we're going to start from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform it. Control T or Command T on the Mac goes into free transform. Notice it's just going around the boundaries of the shadow and not the object boundary. See the object boundaries on here on that mask? That's why we hid that mask or applied it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to scale this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose distort. Now with distort selected, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this corner here and I'm also going to take this other corner and I'm just going to drag this out to however we want the shadow to go. If we want it to go very flat, we'll bring it down more like this. And uh, if we want it to be, you know, against an object, we could lift it up higher. So now when you do that, you might want to reposition this a little bit. And I'm just going to apply this. And I'm going to hit Control T. Because sometimes when you do this, you might need to rotate it a little bit to just kind of get it to match. And if it doesn't quite match in the end, you can use masks or a little liquify or whatever, or even uh, Control T, right click. And you could use the warp tool here. So, you know, we could use that warp tool to force this to, um, you know, just a little bit better to fit within the um, subject that we want to be casting the shadow. So that's another way we can do that. All right, so we've got a shadow here, but right now it's still not realistic. And I'll tell you why it's not realistic, because if you look at a shadow, a cast shadow, you'll notice that when it becomes close to the subject, it's very sharper edged and darker. As it gets further away from the subject, it becomes softer and more transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. Control J, Command J to duplicate it and hide the background. So I'm going to create now what I think it should look like when it's far away from our subject. So we're going to go filter blur, Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. And we really want to soften this off quite a bit. There we go. So we've got a much softer edge shadow now. And I'm just going to click OK. And the other thing we want to do is turn the opacity down. So there we go. We've got a much lower opacity. So this looks good for where it is here for the distance. But up close, it's looking a little fake. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide that one. And then we're going to turn on our other one. And let's drag the other one above the, um, the softer shadow. And what we want to do is maybe drop the opacity down on this one a little bit more too. And we're just kind of looking at how we want this to match here. And that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to turn on the one underneath. So now we've got both shadows on top of each other. What we need to do now is just blend these two shadows together. So with the top one selected, I'm going to grab the layer mask tool, apply a layer mask. Now we're going to make sure our foreground background colors hit the D key. They're reset to white to black. Grab the gradient tool and then up the top here, here's the options. We're going to grab a linear gradient, that's foreground or background, linear, normal blend mode and opacity at 100. And now we can just paint on this mask here and we can blend the two together. Notice that. 
So if we want it to, you know, have it blending in different areas, we can. Or have a very subtle blend across that there. I kind of like that a little better because in all realism, it would actually go more like that, much more smoother, softer blend. So now we've blended the two of those together. Now there's a little bit of a problem there because you'll notice that we've got this softer shadow here. This kind of, we've got the dark one and then we've got the softer ones kind of blending around the edges. So what we want to do is actually do the reverse of that mask on this part. So we want to do the same with the gradient. So we don't have to create a new mask and a new gradient. We can use what we've already done. So I'm going to hit the Alt key, or that would be the Option key, and click and drag on this mask and drop it onto the layer underneath. And notice it duplicates the mask. So now we've got the same mask on both. But we don't want it to do that. We want it to go the other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click this one, and it opens up the Properties panel. And this gives us masks. So we just go down to there, and we're just going to click Invert. Now the other thing you could have done is just clicked the control I or command I on Mac to invert that and there we go now we've inverted it and we've got that shadow so we've got both shadows kind of working together there and there they are they're working nicely together so one of the last things we might want to do is select both of these and I can convert these to a smart object and why am I converting them to a smart object because now I have them both together and I can apply more filters I can go back in here and I can apply another blur if I want. Uh, let's go back under the Gaussian blur again. And I can experiment now with these all working together as one. And notice what happens as I do this. Now they're blending together as one, but it's always going to be sharper here than it is up there. So we could soften that off just a little bit more if we feel like that's going to give us a more realistic result. We could play around with the opacity. We could drop that opacity down more to make it more transparent. And uh, or we could, you know, just keep it dark like that there. So we have these different options. Now we could go in and change these opacity by double clicking and go in there. And if we wanted to make it more opaque or more transparent, we could just do it right there. And that's playing within that smart object. So all it does is it nests those shadows together. So if we hide this, we can see what it's done is it's created this shadow that's just kind of cast over our object there now. So what we could do, if we another quick way to do this, if we wanted to increase the shadow, we could just duplicate it. Come on, J, and that will darken that shadow. And if you feel like it's just a little much, we can drop the opacity down and blend those two shadows together to create a more intense shadow. So essentially, that's how you would create the, um, the cast shadows right here inside of Photoshop. And, and this really helps us to anchor our objects to the um, to the environment that we're putting them in. So, so what we're doing instead of having a backdrop behind them, we're actually placing them inside this and making them part of the environment. One of the other things you want to do too, as you can see, I've done on these other ones. Um, let me just hide that, and I'm going to hide her really quick, and I'm going to hide that in the shadows. You'll notice that the light source on this particular image is over here somewhere and you can kind of see that if I hide these a little bit and so the lights coming from here notice that the shadows are coming on the opposite side so what you can do too for a clue is when you look inside your environment look to where the shadow is inside the environment um, so in this environment here I can see there's a shadow this side of the train track I can see that this part is lit up I can also see what angle it's coming because there's even a little shadow here but not in the bottom so the light is not coming extremely from there. Um, so we can kind of see that's a little bit higher. You can just see where those shadows are falling within the existing um, area. And that's another kind of thing you can do a lot when you want to uh, apply these shadows to make them look more realistic. So let me just uh, hide those out again. And uh, essentially... That's how you're going to create some uh, shadows there, some cast shadows. So don't forget, check out the uh, tutorial on the website on Photoshop Cafe. And please like this and subscribe. Add a comment. Let me know what you think of it, what you'd like to learn. And uh, I'll do my best to uh, provide more tutorials on a weekly basis along the lines of the things that you want to learn. So thanks for watching. I'm Colin Smith, and I'll see you at the cafe.